Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video we're going to be doing the basic proof that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Okay. Now, take this video with a grain of salt because the actual proof for this guy is about 300 something pages long. Okay. So this is a basic proof, not the actual actual proof. Okay. Now, this idea was not credited to me. It was sent through in an email. Um, I won't name the person pretty much, but um, this is a really good proof and I just wanted to share it with you guys here, okay? Now, with a proof, stating the obvious isn't a proof, okay? So a lot of people say, alright, how can you actually prove this? People can like draw an object and go, alright, i got one object, i got another object. If I move them together, I have two of that object. Well, that's not exactly true until we define what we're actually talking about. So for example, we have to define, alright, what is two objects, okay? We have to also define, all right, what is addition here? Because we don't know what that is. That could be one object. One object could just be two things pretty much here, okay? So we've got to define a couple things before we can start this proof, okay? Now, we have to use these things called axioms, okay? Now, an axiom is a true statement that can never be proven, okay? So the first axiom we're going to be using um, is this one here. So axiom, let's just go axiom hashtag one because we'll use a couple in this proof here. Um, natural numbers will all have a successor and a natural number is defined as pretty much a positive whole integer, so 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay? And the second axiom, so axiom, hashtag 2, what I just said, is all natural numbers will have a successor. We'll have a, I'll just scroll down, successor. Okay? Now, a successor is pretty much the number directly after the previous one. So if we were to draw a number line between, let's say, 0 and let's just say, I don't know where that is. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay. Um, the successor of 0 is 1. So we call this the successor of 0, which is 1. Okay. The successor of 1 is 2. The successor of 2 is 3. So this is what we're defining here pretty much. All, nat all natural numbers have a successor, except for zero. So that's the thing we have to put here. So except for zero, okay? For zero, or when n belongs to a natural number, um, then the successor of n will also belong to a natural number, okay? Because you can't have... This won't have a successor. We're assuming because a positive whole number is a natural number, okay? So we're not including the negatives, okay? That's why this one um, we can't define pretty much, okay? Because that would be the successor of negative 1, but that's not included in these axioms, okay? So, so here, this is how we write it. So if n belongs to a natural number, then the successor of that natural number will belong to the natural numbers. So pretty much... Um, if we go 1, the successor of 1 is also a natural number, which is 2. Okay, that's what we're defining. Okay, the second thing we have to prove is we have to define addition. So, defining addition, okay, that's a bit tricky, but we can do it now that we've got that first axiom set up. Okay, so what we want to do is, all right, we define, we need to define a plus b. Okay, so first of all, we need to do the base case. Okay, so if we have, let's say, b is equal to 0, okay? Then a plus b is going to be equal to a, okay? That's the base case, okay? Now, the next one that's a bit tricky. If b isn't equal to 0, how do we define that? Because we'd come back to this original statement here. Well, this is what we have to do. a plus b is going to be equal to the successor of a plus c, such b is the successor of c, okay? So what this means is, if we had this, 1 plus 3, okay? This would be equal to the successor of 1 plus where, so b here is 3. So 3 is the successor of 2. So here we have successor of 1 plus 2, which would be the successor of 3, which is 4. So 1 plus 3 gives you 4. That's what this definition is actually meaning here, okay? Right, so now we got that there. That's all we need pretty much here. So this is really important here, especially with addition, okay? So adding B to A, you need to find a number C such that B is the successor of C and then you can have A plus B. 
Alright, now we're ready for the proof, okay? So, 1 plus 1 equals something, okay? Let's just go, alright, A is 1 and B is 1. So, 1 plus 1 is the successor, so that's your A, so you have 1, and the successor of um, the, the, the next number after 1 would be pretty much, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> um, 0. So, 1 is the successor of 0. So here you have plus zero pretty much. So one plus one equals the successor of one, which is defined as two, okay, from our first definition, okay? And that's the proof pretty much done. So the way you've got to do these proofs is you've got to have a couple axioms, define what some stuff is, then you've got to define addition, then you can pretty much do this proof. Now, again, take this with a grain of salt. This is not the proper proof. This actual proof is like 300 pages long. This is the basic proof, okay? I thought it was really clever, so I wanted to post it pretty much on my channel here, okay? If you did enjoy this video, like and subscribe, and I will um, probably do some more videos like this. If you have any other cool stuff, just send through to my email. Um, it's located on the details of my channel, I think. Um, but otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Ta!